Hey, welcome back to The Hangar and another episode of The Midlife Pilot. I'm Chris, and today is a very exciting day for me. Uh, it is a Saturday afternoon, and we're about to go on our first official dual cross-country flight uh, from Fairmont here. We're flying over about 60 uh, statute miles to the west to uh, Parkersburg, West Virginia. And the other thing that makes today's trip so special is that this is the first time my wife is coming along since my uh, second flight lesson when we were at the Outer Banks of North Carolina over the summer. Come on in the hangar, let's take a look at some of the flight planning that I've done ahead of time. First thing we do is I flip my uh, plotter to the uh, statute side to get a distance between the two points, Fairmont and uh, Parkersburg, and we see that it's about 69 statute miles. Then we'd zip a line through here uh, with pencil and then highlight it just so it's a little bit easier to, uh, to see on our route. Okay, um, next thing we wanna do is just take a look at our, at our flight. Since these are all VFR, we need to look around and, and uh, see if we can find some waypoints to look for. We're in a little bit of a desolate area here where there's not a lot. Um, my, my instructor Tyler and I have already went through this. We've marked some waypoints. Um, we try to keep them about 10 to 15 miles apart. A couple of these are a little bit further than that. Uh, in this case, we have um, this power plant, some stacks here that we know is right off of Shinston, so that is a point for us. We've marked this little town of West Union uh, as another uh, waypoint along our route. And then our third waypoint is St. Mary's, a uh, little town of St. Mary's right by the Ohio River in this little elbow of the river here. Um, and then we're, uh, we're getting close to the airport at that time. We're probably 12 miles or so from the airport. We'll look at that here in just a minute. Okay, so then uh, we, would mark our, we would put our marks on here and lay our plotter back out. And we're gonna get some distances now between these waypoints. Um, and I've got an already pre-completed um, chart here of our, of our flight today. But we would go through and say, well, we see that our first waypoint of the stacks um, that looks like it's about nine statute miles uh, from home, and so we would fill that in to the stacks. 4G7 to the stacks is nine statute miles. Um, let me look again, and we say we're about 25 miles between the stacks and our next waypoint of West Union, so we'd fill that in as well. We're about 20, 22 miles uh, from West Union to St. Mary's, and then from St. Mary's to the airport is uh, 13 statute miles. So we know our route, we've got our distances filled out, we can go ahead and fill in our, uh, our remaining totals uh, for our distances under there as well. Okay, so now let's figure out where we're actually going. We need to find the true course of this line. And so there's a bunch of ways to do this uh, if you wanna be as precise as you can is to get your, uh, get your line aligned, your, your, your plotter aligned with the line of travel. Then center this little dot in the middle of your uh, plotter over over a line of longitude. And then we're going to get our arrows uh, lined up straight up and down, uh, straight uh, up and down with the line of longitude. And then we'll be able to read our course right off of this arrow line. And I see that that is pretty much precisely 265 degrees um, is the true course between Fairmont and Parkersburg. So we can fill out 265. Uh, in our course the whole way, since we're flying a direct, uh, direct route between the two, our true course the whole way is gonna be 265. Uh, next, it wants us to calculate a wind correction angle. So to, to calculate a wind correction angle, you're gonna need to whip out your E6B. Now, obviously, you can also just put all of this into four flight or your other thing, but that's not gonna help you um, on your check ride. So my instructors told me, and I've been doing this intentionally, trying to do every bit of this planning uh, using my uh, E6B. So I found some winds, um, and I, I do mine in two parts. The winds for the climb, because we know we're gonna be between um, ground level at the airport. Um, so whatever that MSL is in our, in our cruise altitude is potentially going to be different winds than we're gonna have at cruise on the way apart, on the way across. So I do it in two parts. Um, and I look up these winds. You can get these from a number of sources. Uh, I use ForeFlight to find my winds. Um, and I found them today earlier uh, before we came to the airport that the winds on climb out are gonna be from 104 uh, degrees at 16 knots. 
So let's calculate what our wind correction angle is. And to do that, you're going to use the, the back side of your E6B. And the first thing we're going to do is put the wind uh, direction that the wind is from. We're going to line that up 104 degrees under the true index mark. So we've got 104 degrees under the true index mark. 104 degrees under the true index mark. Now it says mark wind velocity up from the center point. So you can do this. Um, I put the little center dot on 100 just because it's easier to count. So I need to go 16 up from 100. So I need to put a dot at 116, which is representative of 16 uh, is 16 knots for the velocity. Okay. And now we rotate the wheel to set our true course, which we determined was 265 for this flight. So we rotate the wheel now to put 265 under the true index. And then we slide this up. Uh, we got to slide the wind velocity mark up to our true airspeed. Now, here's where that calculation for those of us, if you were in an airplane that's me measured in knots and you knew what your climb speed was going to be, uh, for your airplane, you would just slide this up to the notch. You'd be doing things in knots and nautical miles. But since I'm doing things in miles per hour uh, and statute miles, I need to make a conversion here. So I know that my climb speed is going to be 80 miles per hour. So I'm going to go uh, to the other side of the E6B. And up here, there's nautical and statute here in these two little blue markers. I need to rotate the scale till I have 80 under the statute. Uh, mark, and then I read under the nautical mark to see how many knots that equates to. So 70 knots. 70 knots is going to be my true airspeed. So I, I move the red dot. I move the red dot to 70, like so. And then it says ground speed reads under center. So under center here is where I can read my ground speed, and that looks to be about 85 knots which I now need to convert back to miles per hour. So I would come back to this side, put 85 here under the statute line. I'm sorry, 85 under the nautical line. And I would read that to be approximately 98 miles per hour, 98 miles per hour, which is what we recorded uh, on that side. Okay, and then it also says the wind correction angle will read between center line and wind velocity mark. So we look at the center line of the scale. Where's our, where's our correction angle? It looks to be about two degrees, uh, two degrees to the left, so that we've recorded that here as well, minus two. So we know that our ground speed on climb is going to be 98 degrees, and our wind correction angle, based on the direction of our flight uh, and the prevailing winds, we need to take two degrees off of that to come up with a true heading of 263 degrees. Now we're still not, we've still not figured out what actual heading on the directional gyro or a compass that we need to fly in the airplane because of a thing called uh, magnetic variation. And it has to do with the magnetic uh, poles of the earth and how they pull. Most of you have seen this if you've done any ground study at all, but these purple dashed lines that run kind of this way along your sectional chart or the other way, I guess, depending on uh, where you are in the world. We need to find those lines along our route of flight and make a decision on what um, what our uh, magnetic variation is going to be. Well, I see one that runs right through the Parkersburg Airport, and if I follow it down, I'll see that this is the 8 degrees west line. And the saying is, west is best, so we add the degrees of magnetic variation when we're dealing with western uh, uh, isogonic lines. And I also see one over here very close to Fairmont, uh, this is the 9 degrees west line. So when I have cases like that, where they're close to the flight, I'll do two different versions. Um, and it doesn't matter necessarily which way you do it. I, I have 8 degrees um, uh, for the first two, half of the flight, basically, and then 9 degrees of magnetic correction. So as you'll see, though, with the change in the winds later, this all pretty much evens out that we're going to fly a heading of 270, 271, it's one degree difference uh, through the whole length of this, uh, of this 69 statute mile flight. So that's basically how we would calculate these. We'd fill these lines in, we'd get our things, we'd get it filled out. Uh, we'll do another uh, video at a later time kind of of uh, the rest of the uh, flight playing. There's plenty of these on YouTube from people who are way more um, versed and, and quick at this than I am. But anyway, those are our waypoints. We're going to go flying here very shortly. Uh, we'll pre-flight the airplane and then we'll get going.
You I guessed had 137 was what I had. Cool. So that explains why we took longer. So I could actually even write, I could even document that now. Yeah, I would document it. It was 124, just so we know. Because I told you the winds had changed slightly since when I calculated that. Yep. Okay, that's cool that that works. And Don, Judy, if you take it with him, he'll be so impressed that you know how to do that. Will he really? He, he, every guy who has taken it with him from Fairmont <laughs> has been clueless. Well, cool. So. Yeah, I learned that. I, I messed with that some today. I watched the YouTube videos. I thought you might ask me to do that. Cool. Well, I'm glad. All right, so we're looking for nine and a half minutes for West Union. Nope. Four. I'm sorry, nine and a half St. Mary's, which is obviously very close on Anything our Anything near St. Mary's? Uh, I mean, there's a river, a Did, big, a big river. you see any of it? Ohio River. Uh, it's going to be kind of to our, uh, kind of to our right. Okay. Uh, I, I do see it. I believe I see it in the river. Two Romeo Mike contact. There, going towards, towards one one nine or towards the power plant. Today. To our like one o'clock. And that's the power plant, right? Yeah. And look where our route takes us. Yeah, pretty darn close. Yeah, I mean right over it. So you can go ahead and just kind of work your way toward that. So we know that we're within, you know, how many miles we got left? So from West Union, we were thir uh, 22 miles left. Uh, remaining, I'm sorry, 35 from West Union. Okay, so we got, that's when I like to do my stuff, about 30 miles in these airplanes, 30 right. to 20, go ahead and get my weather and all that stuff set up. All right, let's go ahead and do that. And there were 132, Romeo Mike, Carmen, 1975. It wasn't us. Yeah. 2435 is what I wrote down, but I'm pretty sure, but that doesn't sound right. Now. It should be right here. 123, 12435, yeah. Don't go off and long. I'm not. We can still hear him, maybe. Sky clear below 12000. Temperature 29 or dew point of 19 or out to 3013. Expect a visual approach, runway 3. Notice Chairman, runway 3, Pappy lights out of service. Hazard squad information available on high water flight service frequencies. Advise on initial contact, you have yeah, whiskey. I don't know, we'll see. Whiskey. Parkers for tire information, whiskey 2153, Zulu weather. Wind 080 at 7, visibility 10. Sky clear below 12000. Temperature 29 or dew point 19 or out, temperature 3013. Expect a visual approach, runway 3. Better chairman, runway 3. Runway 3. Exit at 216, descend and maintain 1-1000. One, one Alright, so Skyhawk 3852 Lima, we have whiskey at Parkersburg. And there are 52 uh, Lima, Roger, in uh, Parkersburg Airport is now uh, 12 o'clock and uh, one niner miles, report field today. Four report field, 3852 Lima. All right, let's go and get our frequencies ready for the next uh, thing. Yep, it's going to be tower. Uh, it's going to be 123.7. Airshell 6177, contact Columbus approach 134.0. Good That's day. really all we can do. Quick brief yeah, for the traffic yeah, pattern. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you want to look at it here? No, no, no. You can, whatever you got here. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, it's 19, 216, uh, contact Columbus approach. And it's going to be on, runway uh, one three. So which way is that facing? Day. It's going to be facing that way. Okay, so we can expect a, uh, well, right base if they give it to us. Right base right or right downwind. Down okay, we're good. Looking at the map, we can see the river. Yeah. Looking for a little bend uh -huh. right there. Yeah. So that's where St. Mary's will lie is in this bend. Yeah. Then we've got a hook to the right and then a hook back around. See it way down there? I do see it. Or just beyond that, where the field lies. Yeah. So literally, yeah. it's just going to be the right up there. That hook of the river. Yeah. And now look down through there, and if you look real hard, we have a runway that lines right up with us. Ah, you're so good at this. So it's to the, is it? Hold on. Let me see that. So, so yeah, on the left side of the river here. Yeah, we're on the left side of the river. We should be crossing over the river. So we're a little left of course, right? Like we should be cutting over that. I see that hook over there. Yeah, and just beyond that, where it breaks to the right, look what's just beyond it on the map. The airport symbol. Yeah. So I guess I see it on top of the hill, but or I mean past it to the right, but it's further right than I thought it would be. 
Or is it just past the bend? I mean, just past the yeah, bend. Okay. That little box in the thing right there. Yeah, it's hard with the sun, but yeah. I see. Yeah, pull your thing in. Nah, it doesn't help it any doesn't help either. Just block the sun. It is, but I, I see it. Yeah, that's the runway that you're looking at there. Not our runway, but... No, but if you look just... In November 82757, uh, what is your uh, type aircraft? We're a PA-28-161 uh, Piper Warrior 2. Like we care. And the river uh, 757, I'll draw all updated. Isn't that uh, RSA's Warrior? What was it? 82757? I think it was. Yeah. The Skyhawk uh, 52 Lima traffic, uh, 1 o'clock and 5 miles uh, eastbound is a uh, Warrior, the VFR uh, 3500. Uh, you'll pass, so it should pass off your right by about two, two to three miles. And yeah, 5 Lima, looking for the traffic. And uh, Warrior uh, 757, uh, traffic at uh, 1 o'clock, 5 miles south left on the Skyhawk, VFR 4500. We'll be descending into Parker Square. Should pass off your right about two to three miles. Okay, we're looking at 757. That's Aaron, one of the guys I went to school with. If you want to pull it up on traffic, feel free. No EDSB. He's going to Morgantown, so he'll be going a little more off the right. Start turning toward the field. And looky there. St. Mary's 940. 950. 950. We can wait a little longer if you want. 950. I really don't see you yet. I'm going to tell Center we have the field. Maybe he'll, he'll, hang, he'll, hang, he'll hang on to you until he's clear of you, but go ahead and tell him. And 3852 Lima, uh, field in sight. And 3852 uh, Lima, roger. Uh, radar service is terminated. Uh, you can squawk VFR and park is right. contact parks for tower 123.7. Have a good one. All right, we'll squawk VFR and contact tower 123.7. Have a good day. Thank you. You want to squawk VFR for me over there? It's just hard for me to reach with you from there. Gives me something to do. Exactly. Let's see, how far are we from Parkersburg? Estimate. What do you think? We're uh, so at St. Mary's right there. St. Mary's now, so we're about the uh, 12, 11 miles. 12. 12 miles. What? Uh, 12 miles east. Yep. Inbound with Inbound whiskey. For, with whiskey for full stop. Yep. Parkersburg Tower, Skyhawk 385 to Lima is uh, 12 miles to the east with whiskey inbound for full stop. Top 3852 Lima, Parker's Ridge Tower. Can enter a right down one or a right base for runway 3. Report uh, two miles out. Do the right base. All right, we'll take the right base uh, for one runway 3 and we'll report it two miles for 52 Lima. No, I can't turn over here, huh? Yeah, so I won't go too far. Right. So set yourself up where you'd want your base normally. No, I can't talk. I can't see the airport because of the sun in my Okay. Yep, so just uh, turn back to your right a little bit. And then the set planning. So we got to get to, I mean, pattern is 1900, the field is like 900. Uh, we're at 4500 and we're like 10 miles, so. That, uh, if you want to do it 500 feet per minute, so to do your do your math, how far you want to go? So 4000 to 2000, 4500, 2000 is 2500. Uh huh, 500 feet per minute, so about five minutes. Uh, and we're how many miles out? We should be descending soon. Yep, right about now. So cool. you just go ahead and reduce the power and do it that way. Probably got I would just crack it. I wouldn't even reduce it. Just use the car beat to reduce it. Just crack or all the way out? Go for it. It's all going way. to need to be on later anyway. And you can reduce it now if you need to, if you want. All right, let's look at, uh, I see the field. Quick uh, descent, descent checklist. Checks, yeah. uh, mixture adjust, we'll, we'll slowly creep that in. Power is desired and car beat is already on. Descent Good. Check. And if I have one more thing to check, let's look at the airport diagram right quick before we get there. Uh, yep. Oh, you're so organized. Okay. 
we're going to be on runway three. Yep, the terminal's here. General Aviation's there. Yep, so we'll want to get off. Get yeah. off Foxtrot? Foxtrot to go. To Echo, right? To Echo. Or Delta to the rim. Delta Echo. Yeah, it depends on where we, yeah, that's fine. How far we can stop. Okay. Don't burn the brakes off of it. We roll out, we roll out. Roger. What I say. Yep, so see you field now. Once you get squared up here. I do see the field. Cool. Yeah, I'm going to get, uh, yeah, this is, I'm pretty, I'm uh, generally okay with this. I don't know how to report a two mile without my handy dandy. Uh, it's all right, we'll call it. I'll, you're to, just now at four miles. Like, I'm this is the edge of the hill. Because I need to get down. Go ahead. Yep, you haven't really descended that much. We haven't even touched power. So do about 1900. And if you do 19 and then 100, no, 100 miles per hour, you'll get about 500 feet a minute. But we'll need more than that. So do about 110 on the speed. Okay. All right, go ahead and start to stay square your base off. It's about where you would want it to be. Tell me when you think you're at two miles. Um, this feels like a short final thing. Feels short? Yeah, I mean, that's the end of that's the end of three right there, right? Yeah, right this way, right? Yeah, this way. The well, right way is long. I'm saying the short final feels short. You don't think it's gonna be from this distance? I guess not. Oh no, we'll see. Um, I'm so bad at distances, Tyler. Um, I feel like maybe... How far do you think the river is away from the airport? We can look at your chart to uh, determine that. Yeah, three miles. Alright. On there, it looks like what? Oh... About a mile, right? Maybe two. Uh, two, two. Split two. the delta. Yeah, so when, just when we're inside it, we can call it right at the river. Keep going, call it now. I think we're going to be two miles here. He's looking for us, so go ahead and turn your landing lights all the way on. Yeah, go ahead and call it. That's on two miles. Yeah. Right Tower, Scott, agree. 5 2 Lima, two mile right base for runway three. Scott, uh, 5 2 Lima, runway three, clear to land. Clear to land, runway three, 5 2 Lima. Alright, before landings. Alright, we uh, seat, seat belt secured. Everybody got your seat belts on? Fuel selector is in both mixture. We have not been. Uh, Go ahead and just push it in where you would want it. Right, right in there. Feel it really yep. jump down there? Yep. Right around there. Okay. Mixture. Uh, car feed is on. Airspeed is, you know, you know how that works. Uh, flaps is desired and then airspeed for right. anything. So, good to land. You are cleared. So, we still got a lot of altitude. Long way to go, yeah. Yeah, pull power all back. Just pull it all the way back to 15 and let it just creep on down. So you notice he told you to report the distance? This uh -huh. place is like Morgantown, they don't have radar. Oh, okay. Whereas, uh, If you want to put a first notch flaps in, you may. Get below 100. All right. We're pretty close. close. We're close. We're close. Okay. We're under 100. And this is the fun part of going into places, is determining, you know, getting the feel for what you need to have in at right. what time. All right. All right. We're getting better here. I'm going to, can I start my shallow turn or not? Yeah, if you want. Just keep it shallow, keep the nose down. Right. Oh, right, 3-0, right, I'm sorry. Yes, I was confused. 
about what runway we were at. We're still pretty high. Yeah, I think we're good. Can I bring my second notch in now? Yep. Which would be all what we would normally do on base, right? You said it was going to be a short mile. No, you're right. You're right. It's long. It's a long you're right. You're right. It may be best to just land with 20 degrees flaps looking at our windsock. See how it's a nice stiff crosswind? Yeah. It's not yeah. stiff, but if it's a crosswind, that's fine. Does that do anything to my speeds? Uh, just a little faster. So around so maybe 80. about 80. That's where we are right now. If I had a little power, we're just sitting pretty good. There you go. Little power, little power, power, power. There you go. So this is going to be left foot. Right. Very good. We're getting under work 70 already. Pull, pull, pull. You're good. It's going to fly. Well, it's our rotation speed. It's like 60, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm getting on the center line. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. It would have been real good if it was on center, but everything is that right. was pretty good. Yeah, buddy. I'll leave my flaps down so I don't get yelled at. Did you want to set spot two Liam Eagle into the GA ramp? Affirmative. Set spot two Lima, right turn on Foxtrot, then taxi via Foxtrot. Go off and echo to the ramp, remain this frequency. Didn't hear him. Fox Rock Golf and Echo to the ramp for uh, 5 to label with you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's what we talked about. So we got Fox Rock straight ahead, Golf is hanging to the left. We got everything. And once we clear this line, we'll do the after lane. All right. Clear over. Okay, great. Uh, what was our time here? What's our time? Touchdown time. 9.45. What did you say it was supposed to be? Uh, 5.45. It would have been if we were driven straight from here. All right. Let's, uh, after landing, check real quick. Yep. Uh, here we go. Yep, you're in. After landing, flaps up. Carpet is already in, and we need to make sure it's about where it is from the ground. That's good. After landing, complete. That's good. Okay, let's get to uh, Golf and Echo up here, and it looks like, oh, yay, for fresh air. Um, we'll go to the left. Is that where fuel in the restaurant is? Everything, so you see this little shack here, it says General Aviation, just beyond the windsock. Uh-huh. That's the uh, GA building. Gotcha. In front of us is the terminal and the restaurants in there as well. Cool. Let's run over to the GA uh, building. Yeah, that's where we'll park Check our fuel park there. Um, Golf Echo. Fox Park Golf Echo. So now we're going to be a left on the 